Hey, welcome to another update on Archmage Rises. Look at how excited Nick is. He's so excited to give you this update. Look at that. Because this is the greatest, most advanced role-playing game ever made. And we're here to prove it. We're here to show you the goods. That's right. That's right. Okay, so here we are again, actually showing the game rather than just talking at you infinitum. Um, we're trying to do a short update this week. Um, Okay, so what's the status on build 11? We are working on build 11 and we are working on, there's kind of six things that we need to do and we just finished one of them. And so we're gonna show you um, that right now. And um, and then we'll show you the list that we're working on. So we can't give you a time frame yet on build 11, but I'm thinking that next week, um, we might be able to really narrow down the time frame for the build. What do you think, Nick? Uh, yeah, we'll definitely be closer, that's for sure. <laughs> Next week we'll be closer. Yeah, I give those kinds of garbage answers on the uh, YouTube. I learned it from you, Thomas. <laughs> I, learned I learned it, it from, from you. you. Yeah. Okay. Children of the '80s trying to make video games. Okay. That's right. So um, what we're going to show here today is uh, part of the simulator tech. Um, so I have been working on something, and I had shown it in previous videos of what I call the history generation. So it's uh, we start the world, and it's just a landmass. There's like nothing there. There's no towns, there's no people, there's no nothing. And so what we're gonna show you is the very beginning of that simulator. Um, yeah, I guess the very beginning of how we create that world. And we just got this put in. So I had been working on a prototype in order to figure out the rules and get that all going. And that's what I'd shown before. And now Nick and I, through this unique thing called pair programming, um, we have uh, pulled it into the game itself and so uh, now we're, we're going to show that. But first, let's talk about pair programming. Nick, how do you like pair programming? I love it. What do you love about it? I love it because half of the time I'm doing zero work, Thomas. That is true. <laughs> you heard it here first. So when I first read Extreme Programming, I was on an airplane flying to PEI. And uh, I was reading it and I'm like, this is amazing. This guy's like so right about everything he says. And then I got to the chapter of pair program. I'm like, that'll never work. <laughs> and, uh, and so when I started my software company, we, we would implement a lot of the things. We, nobody calls it extreme programming anymore. They'll just call it agile, agile, mm -hmm. agile. And then other business types like Harvard are now talking about the agile business and stuff. They're trying to steal all of our cool software development terms. <laughs> but anyway, so... Everybody, you know, you go and you meet somebody at a conference or something like a Microsoft event and you start talking and you're like, yeah, are, are you doing agile? Are you doing extreme programming at your office? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the next question out of the mouth? Do you do the pair programming? Mm -hmm. And what do they generally say? No. 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 That's ludicrous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two people, one keyboard? What, are we trying to save money on keyboards? That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's the people that are so expensive. So... Um, so at my software company, I think at our max, we had 12 developers. Um, we never did the pair programming thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've always been skeptical of it, but the, to pull in the logic of the simulator and stick it into the game, it was just too daunting. I'm like, I'm not doing this by myself. I'm too scared. So I asked Nick, hey, hey, what do you think? Do you think we could uh, do some pair programming? And, and I said, yes. Oh, well, after you called me a big baby, then you said yes. <laughs> so, so, uh, so we tried it. And um, the first day I was like, yeah, that, that was pretty good. I, I, can't, or I can't say that it was equal in terms of productivity to two people working separately. Mm -hmm. But then on the second day, we got a bit of a rhythm going and you were spotting errors or, or like gotchas, like, oh, make sure you do this as I was coding. And I was doing yeah. the same while you were coding. I was like, oh, you can't do it that way because of blah, blah, blah. And I was like, holy cow, the quality of the code is way better than if we had just both worked separately, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you were also coding most of the day, second day, so that's probably why it was faster. <laughs> um, but, but I do think when you have a really difficult problem, um, you know, usually you have to iterate on, iterate on it a few times before you get it right. But, um, and you know, you're always asking yourself the same questions that you could be asking somebody else. So I thought it worked really good. The, you know, it's really important because as we're bringing in your like prototype code, it makes sense that, uh, especially since I know the UI a little better than you do and you know the code side, the logic side a little better than I do, that we can sort of merge our minds and I think it went I think it went really fast and it seems like 
it's pretty high quality. And since this is the base of this simulator, it needs to be right. Otherwise, everything's going to be a little off. <laughs> yeah. And so we've just been reworking yeah. those guts and uh, pulled it in. And it's gone really well this week, I think. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. It's, yeah, it's gone really well. So we're excited to show you the first little tidbit of that. And we're going to keep this video really short because we've bombarded you with 40 minute videos over the last five or six weeks. And uh, it's just no fun watching all that content. I mean, Nick and Thomas are really only interesting for about three minutes and we've already <laughs> reached that point. So That's true. it's all downhill from here. But so let's focus on the game. Okay, okay, so here we are. Let me set the stage. Okay, brand new world. We set it up with 45 settlers um, have now settled into this town. And mm -hmm. just because of the way the code is right now, they built 45 houses. So right. we have 45 houses in the town. And we can pull that up by looking at the household list. And uh, there's everybody, and uh, they're all living in their own separate houses, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's great. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fast forward time, and are we gonna give you the ability to do this? Absolutely not. Well, it might be a cool spell, right? Yeah, well, uh, we're just trying to step through it one day at a time, because we're gonna be running through you know, hundreds of years when you start the game, and we need to make sure that it's everything's working well at the micro scale. Yeah, and when we're running this, um, we're running a week at a time, but it's actually running every hour of every day. Yep. Yeah. Because we're idiots and we think it's really important to just simulate everything. Yeah. So, well. <laughs> there may be some performance tuning to come, but anyway, right now we're simulating every hour of every day for a week. And uh, here we go. So now what I'm going to do is, uh, I shouldn't have pulled up. Oh, there, there we go. Okay. So what happened here is uh, there's less people. Why? Because it started getting married. They started mm -hmm. getting married. And so you see that the ones have turned into twos and we can see which houses they're living in and stuff. Okay, so the Sefton uh, house now is two. So they got married, so that's cool. Okay, so now we're going to, there's desires that are building up inside of the people mm -hmm. over time and they have a desire to have sex with their spouse. And so we're gonna fast forward a whole bunch of time. And um, now Nick, while I'm fast forwarding, you were confused as to why you weren't seeing the twos turn into threes. What, why is yeah. that? Uh, because I figured they would be making babies right away. Yeah. Um, but I didn't realize that it takes nine months. <laughs> um, also, originally, these people weren't pairing up because their uh, sexual desire was too low. So we were trying to, like, get them paired up. And so we had to crank that sucker up to, to test it out. So you heard it here first. This is an educational game. Nick has learned something that uh, takes uh, ten months, technically, Nick, in order to... Uh, 40 weeks. Um, oh, is that right? Yeah, in order to uh, have a baby. Okay, so what do we got here? We got some babies. Is this the first baby? This is the first baby in the town. Mm -hmm. Yep, we got one baby. Okay, and you so see the, popula the population went up to 46 from 45. That's right, we got a plus one mm -hmm. um, because it's now a year later. So let's go visit that family, the Huxleys. Um, and uh, okay, so we're going to knock on the door and they're home. And now we can see the list of the people in the house. Okay, and there is a baby! Look at that! <laughs> it's baby Alan Huxley. Okay, and we can talk to that baby and have our own relationship. Look, first impression was good. The mm -hmm. baby's in a good mood. Look at that. A, a fine mood. Yep, and so we're going to ask, what skills do you have? And he just says, wah. <laughs> and there you go! What other role-playing game can you go and visit a newborn? It is such an uh, important conversation. Um, you know, you don't have that opportunity usually to speak to babies, so. That's right. Um, also, uh, you'll notice if you go and look at your character sheet, everybody you oh, talk yeah, to. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. The character sheet. Um, okay, let's show this. So, right. one of the things is we want to make it easy to be able to navigate. So, you've met these two people. Yeah. Um, the baby and his father. Yeah. So, um, you should be able to click on anybody and sort of get a view into their, uh, into the people they know. And we did talk about whether or not, you know, like, um, we should not give all of this information right away. Um, and that is a good point. But for right now, we're just showing everything. Um, as long as you know them. Yep. So here we can see um, the people that we know. And um, they're supposed to have their head displaying here. And for some reason, it's not working because of some merge issue between your system and my system. But anyway, that part doesn't matter. Um, we can see the person we're talking to, here's their spouse, and here's their baby. And mm -hmm. if we go and we look at their baby, 
um, we can see, well, the baby's head would be right here, and uh, <laughs> these are the parents of the baby. And so you can navigate all the relationships, um, both the family relationships and uh, your relationships, um, through this relationship screen. And it mm -hmm. makes it really easy to, to see everyone that you know and what's going on with them. Right. So um, getting it to work with uh, having people having them get married, picking spouses, uh, having babies, growing the populations of the towns, all that was critical. We had to get that working first um, on our six part plan. So mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's share with the people what uh, the rest of our six part plan is. Um, so we got that working this week, so we're very happy. Um, next thing we're doing is uh, working on the base uh, economy and that is um, getting the resource buildings. We say resource building like a farm produces food and um, mm -hmm. uh, the wood camp produces wood and a mine produces metal, that kind of thing. The really basic resources working. Um, people can have jobs and they collect their pay. Then we move on to advanced manufacturing economy. So taking that wood, turning it into furniture, taking the metal, turning it into um, the uh, weapons or whatnot. Um, and uh, seasonal resources. So the fact that food is harvested at a certain time, um, you have mm -hmm. garlic or ginger out in the wild only growing in certain seasons. Uh, then the, finally, once we have all that in place, then we can turn on the people eating. So the food that's generated within a town actually matters because people are actually gonna be eating that food. So if the food supply disappears, if you were to burn down all the farms, then the people would starve and that would be really bad. And then they would, right. they would die of starvation. Unfortunately, I, I tested that out and it works very well. So we didn't have a, you know, a, a, the economy wasn't producing what the people needed and everybody was starving to death. Yeah. Um, so it would fill up the uh, graveyard real fast. So we need to make sure that, you know, the people are able to get these resources um, from the hexes so they can at least be somewhat um, self-sufficient for a bit anyway. Yeah. And uh, everybody who dies, you can go to the graveyard, you can see who died, when, and why they died. Mm -hmm. um, so after that, we're going to get the traders working, um, moving around between the towns. All this stuff was working before. We've had to rewrite yeah. it all um, into this new system. So we're going to get the traders um, that go out. Basically, there's like a demand list that gets generated by the... Mm -hmm. um, different workshops in the town. When, when people go to like get a piece of metal and there's no metal there, they create demand for the trader. And then the trader right. goes and takes that along the roads and trades with the other towns and tries to collect that stuff up. Mm -hmm. Then the settlement of new settlements. Um, so a town being able to replicate itself and spread around, around the world. And then finally getting the monsters in. So again, we had all this working in the prototype and um, I was able to show like monsters spreading across the world and everything. And now we're just pulling it into this uh, hex version uh, of the real game. And so once we have the monsters part working, we're gonna ship a build, then everybody gets it because they think that fulfills all the promises we made for build 11, um, including new UI and you know a bunch of other things, uh, equipping weapons, all that stuff. But this is the really core simulator stuff we wanted to get into this build and get it in people's hands. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, well, that's 13 minutes of a video. <laughs> Anything else to say, Nick? <laughs> it's better than 45. It's better than 45. Okay, so yeah. this is Nick and Thomas signing off saying 13 minutes is better than 45. That's right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>